let me know when you're able to see. I think you can see my screen now. Okay. So today, what is the menu that I will be learning over here? The first thing is class. I think you are heart of class if you have already gone through any object-oriented programming. Okay. So what is class and all? You can quickly uh, try to solve it with some exercises. Inside the class, what are attributes and methods? Two important terminologies. You can quickly learn it. After learning of both both of the both of the two slides, we can we'll be trying to install a external module called pandas. So pandas module in Python it will be helping us to solve data engineering related uh, problems and all. Okay. So on top of pandas we'll be doing this kind of operation. We can create some data frame. What is data frame? We can quickly cover when we'll be learning this thing in slide. Creation of data frame from a list, creation of data frame from a dictionary. So, list and dictionary, those, those are the two different data types which will be playing a good role while learning the data engineering steps now. Okay, so after learning that, another demonstration on top of pandas, we'll be trying to load some external CSV file. CSV means comma separated delimiter. So, uh, we can uh, just import some CSV file and on top of that CSV file, we can create a data frame. Okay. So those are the important aspects, whatever we will be learning in today's session. If there is any stuck point or anything from your side, please tell me so that we can quickly go through on top of that. Uh, uh, just a quick note, uh, if you are joining, uh, if you are new to the session or maybe you have joined one or two days earlier, if you are facing any difficulties while catching up the thing, if you are already experienced a bit, then there will be no issue. It's totally basic courses. If you are not able to understand or anything, please try to go through the previous recordings, which, which are placed in YouTube, links and all by the admin team. And uh, if there is no issue, then you can just quickly go through whatever sessions we are covering over here. Okay, but if there is any stuck point, kindly ask me. I can help you to understand the thing. Okay, so starting from the class. Okay, so for object-oriented programming, we know what is class. Actually, we uh, we have heard about the thing. This is object-oriented programming, just like if you have already experienced in Java. So Java is an object-oriented programming. There we must have learned what is class okay so the similar kind of class concept is here as well class is nothing but we are creating some blueprint of a particular program itself and that particular blueprint can be used that particular blueprint can be used in any other module or any new module of a program so we can create it once and we can use it in multiple aspects or multiple scenarios so this is the concept of class. How to use it? Just like uh, we can see the inbuilt thing. We have already gone through this. Uh, let me show you. Suppose I'm declaring a variable called V and assigning a value 8. Okay. If I'm just trying to check what is the data type of V. Okay, V is a variable. I'm just trying to, I'm just printing on top of type V. Okay. You can see the output is class integer, int, class int. So in the Python inbuilt, whatever interpreter we are using, in that version, there is a class already defined that is called integer. Okay. So, we are just instantiating that variable. We are just calling this blueprint. That particular blueprint is already available within it. Okay. So we are instantiating this thing within V. So when, I mean, whenever we are instantiating these things, that particular object or that particular variable should be working 
as like the same blueprint. So V is now inheriting the blueprint of integer class. Okay. So if we just put V dot, then we can see all the methods available with the integer. This is a method. This is dunder method. Lots of method. If we just query string, we can see we have learned capitalize and all. Let's let's add let's assign v to a particular string. Hello. So let me show you. So the class is string. Now v is inhibiting the properties of the blueprint. Hello, which is a string. And the same string is being defined as a class in the inbuilt interpreter. Okay, now V is inhibiting the same thing. So V is now a string class. So when declaring a class, we need to declare the particular class names and all. And inside the class, we need to define some methods. Methods means what kind of operation I'll be doing on top of this class. So it's if we just put V dot then all the available methods should be showing over here just like capitalize we already showed to you what is capitalized it will be capitalizing the entire string okay let's assign v1 v1 equal to i'm assigning this thing in another variable called v1 equal v dot capitalize if we just try to print v1 okay capitalize it's its first letter first alphabet should be capitalized so it's already capitalized in form font so there'll be no change just i updated it small h now you can see the change is capital h or you can put upper there is another method upper upper so if we just run it we can see the new variable has been updated to all the upper cases. But what I'm trying to say over here, we need to declare a class first. Inside the class, we need to declare various methods available. I mean, whatever methods we can go ahead for the future uh, applications on top of that class, that can be declared within the class. The methods are declared within the class over there where the class has been defined and during using that particular class we can use that thing as a method okay is this understandable if not i'll be just going through a particular uh, uh, i mean exercises or particular examples over here please let me know that time is it clear or not because this is very much important concept if we need to create any classes or if you if you want to insert or import any particular module or classes then that is very much useful or that is very much required in each of the each programming aspects okay suppose let me uh, create a demo class so while creating a class it's a user defined class now i'm talking about it's not the same class that and that is inbuilt in nature so for user defined classes we need to declare it as a class keyword okay then the class name suppose i'm just declaring class new class name maybe new underscore cls a colon the same kind of stuff so i'm declaring this new class i can pass anything at let me quickly pass it so i'm not declaring anything or i'm not declaring any methods inside it just I'm creating a class without doing nothing inside it. Okay. Now our class is created. I am instantiating class. Just like in variable V, I'm declaring this class. Okay. So I'm inhibiting what is there in new class new underscore cls class i'm inhibiting same thing in inside v if i'm trying to print the data type of v now print type 
we can see it's a new class it's a instantiating stuffs we are instantiating the things over here so it's inhibiting or inheriting all the things from this class now it's showing in this manner hopefully that is okay okay now just going ahead with the real life examples i'm creating another class this is how it should be working actually give me one second so actually yeah this kind of stuff we are doing we are declaring a class over here or we are defining the class in somewhere and while using the same while using the attributes or methods we need to instantiating the class then we can call the attributes okay let's see this thing this is the practical life example so in the previous season as well i have showed this example let's declare class called rectangle okay so it's we are just going at with some geometrical properties and all so inside the class i'm defining some methods so the first method should be always the init method those are conventional way we need to declare it in init methods we need to declare all the properties related stuffs so what are the parameters i requires over here self should be by default it should be there and otherwise it should be length and width okay inside that init methods i need to initialize that two parameters length and width i need to just assign self dot this is the conventional way to write it okay so in this method we are just collecting what are the all parameters to create a rectangle it should be length and width okay if we have length and width we can create a rectangle okay after the next statements those are called attributes because those attributes are required to do the further calculations on maybe we are calculating areas if we have the lengths and widths we will be calculating the areas the perimeters and all for a particular rectangle so we are creating those attributes over here now i am declaring some calculation methods suppose cal area okay i'm not passing anything over here now whatever attributes we have used over here that things we are calling so area i'm just declaring a var variable area equal self length self width okay i'm just putting a print statement with a string the area of the rectangle is just like um that should be returning the value of area this is called left string i think you are already aware we already have taken classes on top of what is f strings and all so it will be just simply returning this values over here 
whatever i'm writing okay the similar kind of stuff we can do for perimeter or let me quickly show you so in the class i have defined this thing in this manner inside the class i'm just in init methods we are taking all the parameters input from the user okay and we are creating those attributes over here and those attributes are being used with these methods this is another methods we are declaring calculation of area in this methods we are taking those attributes and putting some calculation over here the thing is been assigned into area variable and then we are returning area variable over here now how to instantiating these things suppose we have a okay let we can directly put rectangle rectangle is a class rectangle within that i can pass four five or length and width so first it should be good the length should be put over there first then width so 10 comma 5 10 is length and 5 is width okay i'll be doing this method which methods are available over here length uh, sorry cal area you can see it's a method it's already been assigned over here okay so let me run this so we can get it 10 50 and it's giving me the output the similar kind of stuff so i can write it over there you can change it suppose 8 6 is 48 okay anything we just need to update this parameter we have to whatever parameter i'll be passing over here i just need to update and within these few few code snippets i can quickly get the result i can i mean i can also i mean put some uh, more methods over here just like let me i'm just calculation of perimeter cal peri i'm just declaring another methods inside this package of class it's also taking this and what should be the output variable perimeter should be 2 multiplied by length plus width. So I'm just adding one more. I'm adding one more class or one more methods over here, not class, one more methods inside the class. Now I can also use that thing over here. How to do that? Let me just do this thing. Cal Perry. Okay. I'm also declaring these things over here. I'm using 8.6. Let's see the output. Here the output should be 10 plus 5, 15 into 2, 30. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Okay, the area over here, I need to put the perimeter. Sorry for that. Okay, so it's reflecting the proper result just we are passing this command and we are getting the proper result okay and the entire class definition is there i can declare the class over here i can also declare the thing let me uh you can see this kind of command so i have placed this class and everything in test2.py module okay so i can call this thing over here too just like how to call the another i mean uh, external i have declared this thing in over here i can import the same thing over here too import test 2 okay i can import all the classes from test 2 module from here to here in test 3 then i can inhibiting the same class from here to here you can also do this thing from test to 
import rectangle it's already getting this thing it's a class so from test to module i'm importing class after importing the same steps we can use all the attributes or methods over here again so class i have defined only once over here and it can be circulated within modules within another modules okay just like in test 3 hopefully that is understandable any issue till now while learning the class? Anyone is having any issue? Just let me repeat once more time. We are creating a class over here. This this is a dunder method. I mean underscore underscore init. So init is a compulsory one to initialize that particular class whatever attributes or parameters is required we need to declare the same thing over here and on based on those parameter we need to create that attribute in this manner self dot perimeter I mean self dot that particular parameter and self dot this parameter and those attributes can be used in the other methods we are creating the other methods called calculation of area calculation of perimeter over there we are using this thing this thing and this thing in this calculation and this calculation and after completion of the class definition we can call this thing by this manner class name if we have multiple parameters assigned to it we need to pass this parameter over here okay now whatever methods i need to impose on top of this particular class we need to write it over here to get the desired output and the same thing it's been wrapped in a module if i just want to use the same class same blueprint again in another module i can just i have to import this module over here the same class over here and then i can use the same thing the same module uh, the same methods what are there in rectangle i can use the same thing in test 3 file okay that's why when we are, I mean, when big programmers or when big programming, we need to write lots of big programming codes and all. We have to define classes in other sheet. And you can see there's a combination of sheets for a particular programming. Maybe 10, 15 files are there. So you are writing classes inside a particular copy. And in the other sheet, you are just calling this particular I mean, you are importing those particular uh, classes and calling the particular methods over there. Okay. So, this is called class. Any doubt till now? Okay. I hope no. That's cool. Attributes and methods just I have covered over here. Those are called attributes, different attributes we are creating based on the, those input parameters. And those are the methods. So based on those attributes, we are creating calculation and we are putting everything or returning the thing in methods. Okay. Now we will be importing some external module called pandas. So how to do that? We can put, okay, when we'll be trying to install an external module, we can put this command, pip install, pip install pandas. This kind of command we can put in command line windows, or we can also put this thing, if we are using PyCharm, You can type this thing in Python console. Over here, console is the same thing, just like CMD command. Okay. This is one thing. There is some UI controls too. You can go to files, settings. Okay. If we want to install some external package, just click on this plus button. 
search with the package name. Suppose over here it's pandas. So here it's pandas, pandas. Just click on it and click on install package. This will be doing the same thing. So when we are doing pip install, it's doing the same thing over here. Just give me one second. Yeah. So after the installation of the stuff, we can see uh, whatever uh, packages we have installed. We can see this thing over here. Just like similar kind of pandas, we have NumPy, any other uh, thing as well. We'll be learning few of them in our courses. But for for your purpose. Uh, for my purpose, I have installed lots of things uh, that cannot be covered in the class, but uh, in the classes, we'll be covering pandas, abit uh, numpy, matplotlib. Uh, for SQL connector, we'll be using SQL alchemy, pymysql. So those kind of stuff we'll be using in later classes. So today, let's follow on top of pandas. How pandas can be useful or how it's playing the role to use Python as a data engineering tool okay so pandas is there now okay, i'm moving from test two to test three to put so file inheriting the first statement should be we'll be importing the particular module over here pandas and we can we can alias it as pd any name we can give it any name just like in SQL, we are aliasing the columns. If you can remember, the same kind of stuff we can do over to, over here too. Import pandas as PD. So whenever I'll be calling pandas, I can simply write PD only because I have already aliased it. Okay. Now, install of pandas is done. We'll be just following up creation of data frame. What is data frame now? So in SQL, we have handled the data in relational database. We are storing the data in columnar format. We have columns and rows there. We are inserting the records in the tabular structure. The same kind of stuff we'll be doing in data frame. Data frame is the same stuff. It's called the table. It's, kind, it's a kind of table in Python. We can tell it. Okay. As of now, data frame is the same kind of structure. It's, it is having columns and rows. So it, it should be looking like as a table only. Okay. So we'll be creating a table. You can see, we can say over here, creation of a particular table in Python from a list. Let's declare a list. Okay. I'm just L equal. Let me declare a list. Uh, suppose a b c d you put or one two three four okay it's a single dimension list how to convert this thing in data frame the command is we need to create a variable df df is a variable pd is a class i'm using the method pd dot data frame Okay, I'm using the class. Inside the PD, I'm using the class data frame. And I have to pass the parameter L. Okay, so I'm converting this list in a data frame. That's it. Should be test three. Okay, I need to write the output over here. Print data frame. Print this data frame. Okay, so this is our element one, two, three, four. This one, not this one. So if we are creating a data frame, if we are not putting any column name or row name, it will be by default taking its own number, sequential number. So this is the first column. So it's zeroth column. That's why it's put zero. And those are called row index. If we do not put anything, it will be just taking this way zero, one, two, three, four, just like a sequential generator. Okay, so this is a 1D array or 1D list, one dimension list. 
if we just create two dimension list how that should be looking like so uh suppose uh, I'm putting the age of the employee. Okay. Suppose uh, Sudhir, 35. This is one particular list. And it's a multi-dimension list, a two-dimension. I'm declaring another one, suppose uh, Peter, 40. Any other thing? Thirty. Okay, I'm declaring this list. It's a three dimension. Inside the big list, this is the original list. Inside this list, we are creating individual small small list. So it's a two dimension list over here. We can tell if we run the same thing, we can see the things are been inserted in this manner. This is treated as a row in a data frame. Sudhir 35, Peter 40, Kalpana 30. So it's a list, but when we are converting into data frame, it's just looking like a tabular structure. It's having two columns. One is name, another one is called age. Okay, so it's representing a zero and one and having multiple records. How many records we are inserting over here? The same thing should be reflected in this manner. It's called index of the data frame. Okay. This is row index or simply index. We can tell this is column index. We can replace the column index to column name. So over there, I have to pass it. PD dot data frame L. Then we can put columns. Columns equal. I'm declaring another list because we need to pass the name. And age if i just try to run it see name and age has been replaced by the column index the same kind of stuff we can replace in index as well but index it's fine we have to insert millions of data inside a data frame then we should not put an index value over here we can put but it is not a good example or it should not be looking like good let me show you if we just put index equal there are three records, so I'm putting name one, name two, name three. You can see the index has been updated, but in the row identifier, I think it's zero, one, two, it's perfect. But in column, we can change it. The column name is fine. We have definite number of columns, but the record should be inserted. Maybe hourly basis or daily basis. So row index is no more required. I think it's not a good idea. So we can remove this thing. Check the columns only. Okay. So in this example, whatever, what we learned. So we have just declared a list. Okay. On top of list, we can create this kind of data frame. Now, the data frame called DF, it's having this kind of list configuration. Okay, let's declare a dictionary called D. I'm inserting same kind of records, but with a different manner. In dictionary, we have to insert the record in columnar way not row by row in list we are inserting row by row first this row is inserted then this row is inserted but in dictionary we have to first key value pair key should be the column name and value should be the value inside the column so it should be just like this way name And uh, the data should be three data are there. So the so I'm passing all the names first. Okay. 
okay so this is key this is value pair we have learned dictionary you might be having key value pair this is our first element just declaring the second element h Thirty-five, forty, thirty. So I need to put df the similar kind of command dot pd pd is the module. I'll be calling data frame class and passing the parameter d. Okay, df is already been declared over here in the previous one. I'm just putting df one. Okay, so df will be showing the data frame creation and creating on top of list and df1, it's creating the data frame on top of this dictionary, d. Okay, let me print the output, print df1. So, this is the second one, creating from the data frame by creating from the dictionary. So just the main difference is in dictionary, we need to maintain this manner. So it's a columnar way insertion. So we are inserting all the names first. Okay. First name and all the names should be coming over here inside a list. Then age, all the age should be put it over here with respective manner. Okay. So that is how we can create the data frame. Everything is understandable over here to everyone. If not, please tell me. Um, yes, but it, it's a little confusing. Which one? Tell me. Anything? Creation of data frame or? Creation I'll of just... the data frame. Yeah, data frame is just like a tabular structure, tabular structure representation of the data in Python. Because we will be doing the SQL, whatever operation we have done in SQL, we will be doing the same thing in data frame. So that's why we need to convert the data in a relational database kind of manner in Python. Otherwise, we cannot go ahead with the operation. So today we are learning how to create the data frame. Okay. So this is the way to create the data frame. Data frame can be created on top of a list. So this is an example, how to create a data frame on top of a list, how to create a data frame from top of a dictionary. This is an example. Okay. okay. So you have created okay. two different data frames. This is one. Let me print some print. I have split the output. This is the one created from list. This is the one created from dictionary. Okay. So try to check this code once. If you are still facing or uh, having any confusion, let me copy and paste this code over here. In the chat. If you are still confused, you can connect tomorrow for this one. But try to analyze this thing at your own. The other thing, uh, it's fine for other one, Soumya, Vamsi, Lakshmi, any stuck point? Okay, I hope no. But if yes, then please ask me. Try to read it. Try to find what is the issue. You are not, you are not able to establish the logic. It's simple, we are creating Okay, Vamsi, there is no doubt. Yeah. So it's simple. We have learned dictionary. We just declared the dictionary over, over here. Then we are creating a data frame. It's a variable. So we are calling the module PD. PD means pandas. This one. We are aliasing the module as PD. And PD dot the class name. Whatever class name is there. It's a data frame class. We are calling this class name. And this is a parameter we are passing over here. D. D is a dictionary and it's now Pandas has the capability to convert the dictionary in a data frame and we are giving the output in this manner. Okay. It's nothing but creation of a data frame. 
from different source system. Okay, the last topic we'll be covering today, we'll be creating a data frame. It's It, it should be a big data frame from a CSV file. So where the CSV file is located? Okay, today we are learning Python day four class. Okay, there's a CSV uh, Nandi, file. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, can you just yeah. show us like how we have installed the package of pandas? Yeah, that one I just showed previously. So just go to file then settings. There's a plus button, click on the plus. Okay, type whatever module you need to install, type it. Okay, it's pandas. Just click on that and click on install package. It should um, take uh, some time. Okay, uh, like in the settings, like where do we need to go? Oh, sorry. Settings then, go to settings, file, settings. Then there is a, in left hand side, there is Python project. Expand this one. Python interpreter is there. Why do we need to choose which Python interpreter I need to select? At the first day we have showed it. So in the below section, there should be this section. Did you receive it at your system or? You were yes, yes, to yes, yes, I got it. Okay, over there, there's a plus button. Whatever module, in future, you need to install other modules too, because the code is already ready-made in some other module. Okay. Okay. So we need to inherit those properties in our code. This is the concept of class. This is the concept of object-oriented programming. Uh -huh. So someone has already created the logic for ourselves, our usage. We need to inherit the blueprint from there and we need to create our own. We need to create our own calculation. Okay. In future, when you are also expertise in uh, Python, then you can also create some package that can be useful from mm -hmm. others. You can mm -hmm. make it a public one and people will install your package. You are creating some data scientist module or creating some logics over there. So some uh, probabilities concept, you are just, I mean, creating some calculations in a package and you can make it a public one. Then people can install it. Okay. Okay. Or they can import at their programming skills too. I mean, uh, they can use their calculations and use that particular package. Okay. Okay. Now we'll be just creating a data, we'll be create a data frame. We'll be creating the data frame uh, of pandas from a CSV file. So where is the CSV file? CSV file is in my directory. This is my directory exam underscore result. This is a CSV file. Okay. Let me open that particular CSV file. I'm opening it in Excel. So in Excel, it should be looking like in this. There is name, subject, name of the student, subject, which subject, which is the subject, the age of the student and the marks received. Okay, so I'll be trying to import the, the entire CSV file into over here. Uh, what is the command? Let me print the similar kind of statement here too. Backspace over here. So I can directly put df2 equal pd. I'm directly creating a data frame called df2. Okay, now calling the class pd dot read. CSV, it's a function inside the class. Okay, inside that I just simply call the directory. Uh, copy as a path, I'm copying this thing as a path and passing the same thing over here. Just one thing we just need to note it. We have backslash over there. So backslash, if you can remember in print statement, we can use backslash as a escape character. But over here, backslash is a character itself over here. 
So just to remove this confusion, we need to put another backslash for each of the backslashes. First backslash we'll be using as a escape character and second one is the proper string. Otherwise, it should be throwing an error. It will not identifying the path because backslash the, the particular slash they will be interpreting as a escape character and they will not be identifying the entire path. So just I have repeated one more backslash instead of each backslash. Now let me print df2. Okay, this is the Excel, whatever we are showing over there, the same has been imported in data frame. Okay, so Python can able to read this particular CSV file from that file to this data frame. You can see this is the columnar structure having the header too. This is header. 0, 1, 2, 3, these things. This thing, the same similar kind of stuff you can do also in NumPy, but with the structural modifications over there, but it's same. Okay, any doubt while creating the data frame from file? It's simple. Just we need to use this command, pd.readcsv. Then where the CSV is located, just call it. Okay, and just print it. It should be over here. Hope there is no doubt. It's also very simplest one. So tomorrow onwards, we just learned today how to create data frames. Data frames are ready. So tomorrow we'll be going ahead with transformation of the data frame. Yeah, Vamsi, that thing we have uh, told in last week actually. When we have installed the PyCharm, yeah, you can use definitely a different code editor. So Jupyter Notebook is one of the code editor where we can put the code. So yeah, you can put Jupyter Notebook or any other, uh, just like uh, any other code editor as well. This is as per your own wish. Just I recommended this thing because this is simpler to use. Or if Jupyter Notebook is available with you, yeah, you can definitely write your codes over there and execute the code over there too. There'll be no issue. Okay. Okay, fine. So, yeah, is it understandable to everyone? Pratusha? Yes, yes. Okay, so we'll be learning tomorrow how we can uh, uh, have some operation on top of data frame. We'll be just uh, in, okay. in the last session as well, we will be learning uh, how to, how to uh, import the data from different database systems, just like we have MySQL. So how to import data from MySQL? We'll be taking one of the tables data from MySQL to this Python by in data frame format. And uh, that thing we will be also covering in last class for, for the ETL, uh, when we'll be learning Python as an ETL tool. Even we have already started it. We are just doing the extract operation. In ETL, we, have, we are having extract, transform, and load. We are doing the extract operation now. We are extracting the sources data in this manner and creating the data frames in Python. So when all the data frames are ready, we can convert the data frame. We can do the required operation on top of data frame. We can clean the data frame. We can do several kinds of stuff on top of data frames. When that is completed, we'll be trying to load the data frame into different target system. Maybe it's a database, maybe it's a another file. Okay. So tomorrow onwards, we'll be learning how to transform the data, data frame. What are the different operations? We can go ahead on top of data frames and all. Okay. Okay. That's all for today's session. Let's connect tomorrow for more details on top of data frames only. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Yeah, uh, Nandi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you me. just can you just paste the uh, you know last code what you have written for importing the CSV? Yeah, yeah, yeah.
This is the this one. Yep. First of all, you need to, uh, I haven't pasted this one, import pandas as PD, that should be a first statement. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, the PD, I mean, if you're not importing this particular module, then it should not be working. So today, yes. the class is very much important. Actually, we are learning the things, how Python can be used as a data engineer's tool. So starting from today, maybe two or three more days classes we'll be covering, just like we'll be using, I mean, uh, doing uh, operations on top of data frames only. So if there's any stuck point or anything, kindly ask me. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's all for today's session. You didn't paste it in the group chat. Yeah, this one. Uh, okay, it's to Vamsi, correct? Sorry. Yes, everyone in meeting. Uh, I mean, I'm so sorry. Uh, not this one, like, uh, yeah, reading this. Yeah, I'm pasting this thing too. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I got it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.